what's a country? It's geography, of course. But ultimately, it is people and the work that they do. Today, I want to share with you a formula that could help countries, companies, and people to bridge the many gaps that hold them back. I call my formula MAI, or Mind, Action, and Endurance. Think about MAI as if it would be a beautiful woman. And before I share the curves and temper of this beautiful Latin woman, let me uh, tell you a story. Imagine you are far away from here, in a land called India. You're standing in line in this uh, dusty hallway, waiting for the deputy minister uh, of the city of Ahmedabad in the state of Gujarat. That uh, humid, hot afternoon, you're sweating your face and your sides. People are standing. Some of them are, are uh, lying on the floor eating. It's very smelly. You're like in the filthiest public, st public place you've ever been. And uh, you're waiting for this official to call, call your name. I was there uh, with my colleagues from Sinepolis. I was there because we were going to beg for an operation license for a cinema that was standing in that city in a brand new shopping mall for the past four months ready to open and we have no operation license yet. In order to get there, we spent more than 800 hours of academic research. 800 hours is like the time it would take to watch every single movie produced by Hollywood last year. We did 12 trips to India, which is like flying from Panama to Miami 94 times. We spent uh, four years setting up and putting together our, our uh, Delhi office, our executive office back there in New Delhi. And we have spent the cost of 60 screens. We had only eight or 10 built and none of those were operationals. We've gone too far just to realize that we have nothing yet. Have anyone uh, visited India? Some have. For those who have, I'm sure you've found a beautiful and exotic land, charged and marked with contrasts. From the beautiful mountains in the northeast, uh, in the Himalayas, to the beaches of Goa in the southwest. India is a land of 1.2 billion people, from the poorest to the richest. In many ways, India mirrors my country, Mexico. Mexico is also a very beautiful country, uh, charged with contrasts. Part of its enduring beauty actually comes from its contrasts. But not all contrasts create beauty. I believe that in Mexico and in India, Contrasts in the social and the, in the economic landscape are hurtful and couldn't and shouldn't be so, so dramatic. Mexico also has beautiful mountains, beaches, and Mexico is a very rich country in natural, uh, in natural resources, but it's a very poor country in economic terms. Out of the 34 uh, OECD countries, Mexico is the poorest in terms of GDP per capita, and yet, Mexico has the richest man on earth. For the fourth consecutive year, uh, Mr. Carlos Slim has been appointed as the richest man in the planet uh, in a country that again ranks the lowest in terms of GDP per capita. In terms of education, Mexico has had three Nobel laureates and our contribution to culture uh, in general, I believe, has been extremely vast. But on the flip side, our education levels, again, compared to all the OECD countries, are the poorest. We rank the lowest in every single public measure that exists for education. And uh, speaking about education, can you think about three books that influence your life? Can you think about them? Well, the president of my country was not able to answer that question at an international book fair. Imagine that. On his benefit, that question was not prepared. It was an impromptu question. But yet, it's still a symptom of our education levels. Political parties and unions has kid have kidnapped our education system. And because of that, our education levels are really lamentable. 
Have any of you been to the city of Morelia in central Mexico? Yeah, a few. Well, I live in Morelia for the past 20 years. Uh, Morelia is the capital of the state of Michoacán, another beautiful state also marked with contrasts. Out of the 31 states in my country, in Mexico, Michoacán, the state of Michoacán, ranks top seven in terms of population, but bottom seven in terms of GDP per capita. We, are, we live in a state that exports the most labor to the U.S., number two exporting labor. So just after Guanajuato, Michoacán exports the most people migrants to the U.S. And Michoacán, in spite of all of its beauty, has uh, two very important contrasting realities that are also hurtful. One has to do with education, and the other one has to do with governability. In terms of education, uh, Michoacán has had the first Nobel Prize laureate. Uh, Alfonso García Robles, born and raised uh, in, in Michoacán, got in 1982 the Nobel Prize for Peace. On the flip side, Michoacán ranks bottom four in all of our internal education measures. So Michoacán lowers the average that I've just mentioned for the OECD countries. Speaking about uh, governability, Michoacán has become infamously visible internationally uh, because of its violence and because of the organized crimes. But in the past five years, my home state has had five different governors, two of which have links with the organized crimes, them or their families. No wonder why we are having all these governability problems. Um, and in spite of all this uh, political turmoil, uh, we also have a huge economic and budget problem. Michoacán's debt, internal state debt, for the past five years with these five governors, has increased 30-fold, 3-0, 30, 30 times. So uh, we live in a state that is poor, uneducated, and broke. And in spite of that, this state has witnessed the growth of a company that was able to compete uh, in an international uh, arena and in the international market and has become uh, a, a global class company. That's our corporate building at uh, Cinepolis, and I joined Cinepolis, uh, as Cesar was saying, 20 years ago. Uh, when I joined the company, the company had 280 screens in one country, in Mexico, and today we are reaching the 4,000 screen mark in 12 countries. The company has grown for being uh, a regional medium-sized company to become the largest circuit in Latin America, fourth largest company in terms of screen count in the world, and second largest company in terms of, of attendance. How did that happen? I mean, uh, how come Morelia bloomed like an oasis in a desert of, of corruption and, and, and mediocrity, as I mentioned, in, in our hurtful home state? Well, I started sharing my formula uh, about mind, action, and endurance. And I said that you, we can think about this formula as a beautiful Latin woman. Let me introduce you um, to her, Mai. If you engage with Mai, she can change your life, as she did with mine and the company that I work for. Um, I believe that the solution to the external hurtful realities should come from within, should come from looking at ourselves and improve in our minds, our action, and endurance. And I'm going to talk about these three things in the rest of my presentation. But before I go there, I want to thank uh, the Mexican movie actress Sandra Echeverria for sharing with this audience her uh, picture in order to put my uh, memorable image. Sandra embodies the virtues of Maya, and I hope that in every movie where you see Sandra, you will remember about this concept. So having said that, let me go back to my imaginary Mai and her first attribute, having a humble mind. And speaking of having a humble mind, I really believe that movies shape our lives and change the way in which we, we see reality. Here I have to make a pause in order to acknowledge and recognize how proud we all Mexicans feel after last Sunday and Alejandro Gonzalez Iñárritu swiping the Oscar night. Uh, I believe he did an extraordinary 
job and for that small group, the very influential uh, of people that think that we Mexicans are only good at swiping their floors, I believe that Alejandro González Iñárritu has graciously proved them wrong. But let me go back to movies and, uh, and a humble mind. When I think about a humble mind, uh, one of the scenes of one of my favorite movies comes to my mind quickly. Have any of you seen The Dead Boy Society? More hands, that's great. It's one of my favorite movies, and if you recall uh, one of the most memorable scenes, you can think back of Professor Keating talking about a concept called carpe diem. Carpe diem was the Latin word for seize the day. Seize the day, be brave, learn, think, make questions, and with every answer, a new question would come afterwards. Uh, I really love and enjoy being around people who see their lives as carpe diem lives. Probably that's why I love Ted and I love being here with you all. But I graduated from college. I also did uh, economics just, just like Jim in 1994. And I went to, to Morelia. And as I said, this company was small and regional. Back in those years, in the 90s, a huge threat for the Mexican economy and businesses was NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement that Mexico signed with the US and Canada. Back then, um, many of the largest companies in the world were threatening to enter to the Mexican market. And at least in 1994, five of the top 10 companies in the world entered the Mexican market. So we knew that competition is going to be fierce. And we knew that the companies that will stand the test of time will be those companies that understood the market and executed better, having a humble mind and being a company of action. Even back then, uh, we knew that having a humble mind was required and was of paramount importance at every level of the company. I remember 12, 13 years ago, um, interviewing a young man from the city of Altlan, Jalisco. Uh, he was in the company uh, for a job post for a manager in the city of Guadalajara. That young man in the, is in the center of the picture. He's uh, with the cops in his hand. His name is Diego Diaz. And actually, by a coincidence, Diego Diaz is here in the audience. Uh, and I knew Diego 12 years ago. And every time I visited his cinema in Guadalajara, he always had a clever solution to an operation problem. After his great performance, he was called for uh, a new position back in home office. So he was the corporate liaison between operations in Mexico. Then he stepped up to another position internationally as the operations liaison with all the territories in the world. And last month, Diego was promoted and appointed uh, to head one of the largest, our largest operations internationally. So uh, I believe that having a humble mind uh, has paid off for many people in the company uh, and Diego is a great example of that growth within an environment that is really competitive. How a humble mind can make you shine even if all the, many of the other uh, colleagues are also as um, passionate about the business. Here is Diego with our Indian team. Mai is also a woman of action. Um, why action? My will help you avoid procrastination. Procrastination is its uh, natural tendency for avoiding moving from where you are. And we really believe that uh, in order to get where, where, where you want to go, you need to get out of your comfort zone. I was telling you about the 90s. Uh, we spent the 90s uh, defending our turf, and we were successful in that. Uh, we were able to pass Y2K as the largest circuit in Mexico, and we felt quite, of comfortable, quite comfortable at the beginning of, of this century uh, because we were leaders in our Mexican market and uh, many people in other industries said, well, why do you want to go out of Mexico if you are so comfortable in this market? And I saw the company willing to take that step and get out of the comfort zone. And as an executive that I had no um, formal education after I did my, my college, I thought that also an education 
step for me was required in an international environment, something that gave me as well tools for facing the future that the company was heading towards. So I applied and fortunately got into uh, Stanford in California and uh, I was not actually the uh, normal Stanford applicant. As you know, Stanford sits in the, in the heart of the Silicon Valley, the cradle of entrepreneurs, and I was an executive. Uh, in the Silicon Valley, corporatism is, is lame. And the rest of my classmates, they were all willing to become multi-billionaires, discovering the next Facebook or the next Snapchat. They were all thinking about technologies of the future, and I was thinking about a technology and a business that was 125 years old. I was thinking about cinema, so I was kind of a mismatch in, in, in that group. I remember during my first term when I uh, presented Cinepolis, just like I am doing here today. Uh, and one of my Indian classmates approached me uh, after I finished my, my, my talk, and he said, well, Miguel, did you know that India is the country that produces the most movies in the world, more than the US, sells the most tickets in the globe, and has one of the poorest cinema infrastructures in the world? Then I had a wow moment, and that question really hit me hard. I was sleepless for a couple of nights, and after I, I recovered from that question, I came back to this uh, classmate, and I teamed up with him and with another Indian classmate, and I dedicated the rest of my time uh, there at Stanford writing a business plan with these two colleagues. And the business plan was about a Mexican company going to the other side of the globe uh, expanding an exhibition company into India. We required one uh, professor to be, uh, to, to be supervising and her heading our business plan, but we didn't take one, we, we took nine. Um, we thought that we were having such a great advice, the smartest people uh, around for free, consultants for free, we thought that we needed to, to take the opportunity, uh, and we did, but these professors were brutal with us. They challenged our assumptions many times. We started from scratch many times, and uh, as well as it was exhausting, the learning process was also amazing. Many professors at, at, at Stanford are from India, and I remember the, the dean of the business school saying that ours was one of the he said, one of the sexiest business plans uh, back then, and I was just thinking, can you imagine something as boring as a business plan being sexy anywhere? <laughs> well, that's business school. And uh, so in the end, we wrote this business plan, and I can tell you about taking action. Uh, the decision for getting more formal education was one of the best decisions that I've ever made in my life. The decision for the company, for expanding internationally, was one of the best decisions that the company has made uh, so far. So, uh, let me go to my final part, endurance. My is also a woman of endurance, as many women in the world. Um, I started sharing a story in India in that hot, humid afternoon. And let me tell you that India, talking about endurance, India is a country that tests your limits of patience and endurance. Going back to that hot mm -hmm. afternoon, uh, we were standing there, really, our patience was almost done, and suddenly that mystic door opened and they called our names. We entered with this official, and then another number of hours started us explaining and giving every uh, single detail of why we were suited and able to get that operation license in the end that night that uh, Indian officer granted us our operation license. Two weeks afterwards, we opened that cinema in Ahmedabad. And then the magic started. Crowds really flocked. This is a real picture of the opening of one of our cinemas in, in India. And just like the one in Ahmedabad, many more followed. I was amazed seeing how crowds flocked to each and every single cinema that we opened in, in India. Today, seven years after we started our Indian venture, we have 200 operational screens back there. 
uh, we run the two largest megaplexes in the country. Uh, number one is Sinapolis, Mumbai, and number two is Sinapolis in Pune. Uh, this year, we are expecting to serve 18 million people in our cinemas. That's close to five times the population of Panama. Uh, and we are the third largest exhibition com company in the country that produces the most movies and sells the most tickets in the world. India no longer has uh, one of the poorest infrastructure, cinema infrastructures in the world. Cinepolis has been the fastest growing company in the, in the history of India. So having endurance has paid off for this uh, Mexican company. I started saying that uh, for the many problems that we face outside, for the many contrasting realities that we see outside, the solution should come from within. And I love a, a quote from Theodore Roosevelt that says that it's only through labor and green effort that we move, that we move on to better things. I shared with you uh, the concept of my, and uh, it was, as I said, embodied by, by this beautiful picture. And think about my as a person that um, can handle many suitors. She's not exclusive, <laughs> which is great. That's the good news. The bad news is I'm going to ask you just for one favor before I end. Please, about my, don't tell my girlfriend. Thank you. <laughs>